welcome to Accounting for Watchback. This is the third episode in a multi-part series on accounting for income taxes under ASC 740. In this episode, we're going to talk about permanent differences, which occurs when a transaction is treated as income or expense for book purposes in accordance with U.S. GAAP, but is not for tax purposes in the Internal Revenue Code. No deferred tax liability or asset is recorded since the difference is permanent and will not reverse over time. When this occurs, the effective tax rate of a business is impacted. A few simple examples of permanent items include interest on municipal bonds, meals and entertainment, and executive compensation, but there's more. We're gonna use those three throughout this video. Meals and entertainment are deductible business expenses for book purposes. However, IRC Section 274 limits the deductions for certain food and beverage costs to 50%. Entertainment costs are not deductible. The non-deductible portions are added back to income for tax purposes. This creates a permanent book tax difference. Compensation is a significant expense for companies. However, the Internal Revenue Code limits the amount of expense taken on a tax return for certain highly paid employees. Additionally, when companies choose to pay their employees with stock options, the value used to determine expense for book purposes is estimated at a different date and using different metrics from what is used for tax purposes. In essence, the value of expense may be completely different for two different areas of compensation. When a company invests in municipal bonds, they receive interest income. This income is recorded for book purposes as a debit to cash and credit to interest revenue. However, the tax code provides that this income may be earned tax-free since it is an investment in a government asset. We will use municipal bonds to walk through how a permanent difference is journalized and how it impacts a company's effective tax rate in more detail. Let's assume a company receives $10,000 in municipal bond interest for the year and book income inclusive of this interest for the company is $110,000. When preparing the annual tax return, the company would reverse the $10,000 and only record taxable income of $100,000. This income will never ever be subject to tax. As such, book tax expense should not include taxes on this income. The company would credit income tax payable to the IRS for $21,000. No deferred tax asset or liability is recorded, and the plug to tax expense is $21,000. Having a portion of income never subject to tax, therefore, reduces the overall tax rate of the company. Out of $110,000 of earnings, this company's $100,000 is subject to 21%, and the $10,000 is subject to 0%. In other words, this company pays $21,000 of tax on $110,000 of earnings, resulting in an effective tax rate of 19.09%, not the 21% statutory rate. Most large companies have both temporary and permanent differences. They compute taxable income to get their payable, quantify their cumulative deferred tax liability and benefit on their temporary differences, and plug tax expense to balance. They then provide, in the footnotes to the financial statements, a reconciliation between the U.S. statutory rate to their effective rate. For example, let's assume a company has pre-tax book income of $100,000. They have a $20,000 temporary difference due to depreciation during the year and permanent difference related to non-deductible entertainment expenses. Taxable income after making these book tax adjustments is $92,000. Similar to our other examples, the company computes its income tax payable by multiplying taxable income of $92,000 by the statutory rate of 21% to get $19,320. Then they record any DTLs or DTAs. In this example, the depreciation deduction creates a future taxable item. So 21% times $20,000 gives us a difference of 4,200. It will be a credit to deferred tax liability. Finally, tax expenses plugged as a debit for $23,520. The effective tax rate in this example, comparing $23,520 of tax expense to book income of $100,000 is 23.52% not 21%. The permanent difference created a higher tax than expected. We can reconcile the difference by isolating the impact of the permanent item. Book income at 21% would have created a tax expense of $21,000. The permanent item resulted in additional tax of 2520 
If you divide the 2,520 tax to book income of $100,000, it equates to a 2.5% tax impact. Adding the two taxes together and the two percentages, we get back to our calculated tax expense at 23,520 and a tax rate of 23.5%. Permanent differences, valuation allowances, changes in tax rates, items subject to a preferential tax, state and foreign taxes on earnings are all examples of items that can impact the effective tax rate of a company. And to the extent material should be considered in a company's reconciliation, similar to how we just itemized the permanent difference. Thank you for listening to Accounting with Audra on permanent differences under ASC 740. If you have any additional items you would like to make easy, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. And as well, consider subscribing to receive updates when new videos are posted.